gentlemen, if you could put your hands together for Miss Penny Fox. So good afternoon. I'd like to welcome you here to St. Paul, to um, Treaty 6 territory, and of course, a home of the Métis. St. Paul was once uh, St. Paul the Métis. I welcome you here today, and I want to, in I'm Penny Fox. I am the general manager of Community Futures Office here in St. Paul. So my, my area is all of the county of St. Paul, and the county of Smoky Lake, and Good Fish, and Saddle Lake. I am, so I'm going to be part of the presentation, and then I'm going to uh, pass the mic next to Jean, who is the general manager in Lac La Biche, and then he's going to pass it to Phyllis, who, Phyllis is the busy lady of the group. She's got two offices. She's got OCF Lakeland and CF Lloyd Minster. So we're each going to take a little piece of this presentation. So today we're here to talk about what it is that Community Futures does. And Community Futures is a national program all across Canada. How many of you are familiar with Community Futures? Okay, quite a few of you. <laughs> Great, because we can then shorten up this presentation a little bit. So Jean put this PowerPoint together for us, and it's going to introduce Community Futures, and then we're also going to move on. These are all the things that Community Futures does, but we're going to move on then to talk about how some of our organizations are also involved in health and in food. So as I said, Community Futures is a national program, and we are only in rural Canada. So there are 90 not-for-profit Community Futures organizations in Western Canada, and 268. There are 27 Community Futures offices across Alberta. So wherever you are in rural Canada, uh, check us out because we're all across, all across Alberta and all across Western Canada. So who are we? So Community Futures has been around for 30 years. And we were started at a time um, not um, much different than now when the, when the you know, economy was slow and the government recognized that most jobs in Canada were coming from small business. So they were looking for a way to start up more small businesses across Canada. So they started the Community Futures Program. I believe it was supposed to be kind of like a temporary program, but I think we've done such a good job, 30 years later we're still here. This is what Community Futures looks like in Northern Alberta. There are 11 offices, and this is where they're located. You probably can't see that at the back. But Slave Lake, of course, St. Paul, Lakeland, Tawatna, which is Westlaw, uh, Wood Buffalo, and Fort McMurray, Hinton, Jasper, we're all over the north. And each location is different because each of us have, has a board of local directors that manages and operates our community futures organizations. And why are we different? And we are different. We're all different amongst our 278 organizations. And we're different because we are managed locally by our not for profit boards. Each of those boards knows their communities. We live, we volunteer, we work in our communities, and many of our board members too also own their own businesses. In my case, uh, most of my board members actually are min elected municipal um, or appointed um, members. Some of the other boards are, are a little bit different. We do have uh, two members at large as well. But they know the community because they live here, they've raised their families here, and, and they're also, like I say, a lot of them running their own businesses. We're part of the community. Again, we're out in the community. Um, we're volunteering. We're doing all of those things that build community. And we don't just talk about money. We're involved in a lot of things that aren't about money. Um, you know, we're, we're working with those volunteer not-for-profit organizations and we're working in community just to help it grow. Uh, what the success of community features, so this study was done in 2016 and 2017. And what, uh, what our funder did, so we're funded through Western Economic Develop, uh, Diversification, and they did a survey and they took small, business, small businesses that had been supported by Community Futures and small businesses that had not, and then compared the two. And if you look at these numbers, I won't go through them all, but if you look at these numbers, you'll see that the businesses that did have some contact with Community Futures were more successful in the long term. Business planning. So this is usually what brings people to our doors. Somebody has an idea, they, they come to a conference like this and say, how can I get involved? They've hooked up with somebody in the community that says, hey, let's partner. But they don't, they're not sure what that's going to look like. So they've got the idea, but they're not quite sure what it's going to look like. So they come to us and they sit down 
And one of our speakers spoke earlier about relationships, and this is where our relationship starts. Pour a cup of coffee, we pour a cup of tea, and we sit down, and we all have business, business analysts, and that's usually where it begins. So Jody at the back in the red shirt, Jody, wave your hand. Jody, that's my business analyst back there. So you would come into our office, make an appointment with Jody, and you sit down, and he'd have a coffee with you, and he'd start talking about who are you, what are your goals, what is it, what is it that you'd like to do? And then through that conversation, and, and through talking about, he'd ask you questions, and we have a workbook, but through that conversation, you sort out all the things that you would need to know to start to expand uh, or to move, because in some cases, you're, we're moving that business into the region. At the end of that, and that can happen, we can go back and forth and back and forth a number of times, however long it takes, then two things happen. Usually the person is ready to say, yep, I'm ready to jump into this business, let's go. Or they'll go, whoa, hold on, this is a little bit more than what I thought, and they need to back up, and they need to maybe take a little bit more time. But once we're to that point where they want to move forward, they'll have all the things that they need to know to go to their traditional funder. And so they can go, and away they go, and they go to the traditional funder, and if that funder says, yep, here you go, here's your money, away they go. And then we'll check back with them a little later to see how they've done. In some of that, and it depends on what kind of business you're running, but most of the time you're going to need some kind of research, and we can connect you up with that research and we can help you find it. Same thing with patents. A couple times a year we're asked about patents and patent law. Uh, we're not experts in that, but we can certainly get you to those people that know how to do those things. We have other resources. We have business planning workbooks. We have templates, self-assessment guides, all those kinds of things. And they on and on and on and on, right? We have all those resources depending on what it is that you need to know. And if we don't have what you need to know, we'll find out who does have it because we have many partners in the organizations um, around and, and we know people in our community and we're not afraid to call them up and say, we've got a, someone who could use your help and we put them together. Now, on to the lending. I'm going to let Phyllis talk to you about lending. Because <laughs> Phyllis has been in this game almost as long as Community Features has been around, is that true? 32 years. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> 32 years, see? So she probably knows everything about lending that, uh, that there is to know in the Community Features world. This is Phyllis. Good afternoon. As Penny said, I'm the manager with Community Futures Land in Bonneville, Cold Lake, and also with Lloyd Minster. So for Lloyd Minster Vermilion, and I have been with the program for 32 years in British Columbia, Alberta, and Saskatchewan. Um, one of the things uh, that I was actually very interested in talking to you today about is I fully understand how difficult it can be for uh, Indigenous people to access funding because of some of the realities of the land base that they live on, the fact that typically uh, lenders want to look at getting mortgages to back up the financing that they're providing. Um, so uh, just a, a very brief history for myself. I grew up in British Columbia and where I grew up, my parents' land was completely surrounded by Indian Reserve and I actually went, on, went to school on reserve until grade six when I had to be bussed into the community with everyone else off the reserve as well. Um, I, I have a very strong understanding of some of the difficulties that Aboriginal, and I'm sorry if I use the wrong terminology because I've been around it a long time and I don't always get it politically correct because to me it's just, it's, it's entrenched in my brain some of the, the old language and so I do apologize, I don't mean to offend anyone, it's just, um, it's just what I grew up with. Um, but I, I certainly understand how difficult it can be. And when I talk to my brothers and sisters in the community futures world, um, I talk about some of the funding opportunities that we've had on reserve, on settlement, and with Indigenous people because um, I've had some really huge successes in my years of working with those peoples. Um, one of the things, and I mentioned this to Peter when I talked with him the other day, I'm, I'm pretty blunt and I'm pretty forward about this. Uh, we are lenders. We do expect our money to be paid back, but we want to work with you. And one of the ways that we can make sure that that happens is to make sure that you have support in your communities themselves. So when I go on reserve or on settlement to look at doing a loan with an individual, if I can get a bank council resolution or a council resolution to support your loan and give me access to get on your land and get, your, get my assets, if the loan does go sideways, I don't have a problem whatsoever doing any kind of funding with you. 
Um, in some cases, we've even done um, letters of guarantee from the council. Those are the kinds of things that can make this work and it can make it work very, very quickly. So Community Futures can loan up to $150,000 and in some cases we can partner with other offices and do loans larger than that. We are very, very supportive of the small business person. We understand what the needs are and we certainly understand what the difficulties are for Indigenous peoples trying to access funding. We also recognize um, some of the um, new opportunities that are being presented here in the last couple of days and we're extremely interested in partnering with you on those kinds of opportunities. I had a brief chat earlier with uh, Peter regarding uh, equity investment positions and I do have to be completely honest, not every Community Futures office is willing to do an equity position uh, investment, however there are those offices that will. And the other little tidbit for you to take home today is that with the way that the Community Futures are structured, we each have a region that we do serve. If for some reason you go into any particular Community Futures office in this province and they don't want to work with you, because everybody's policies is slightly different, everybody's lending portfolio is slightly different, um, but all of us have a relationship with the other offices. So, for example, if you had gone into Penny's office and she said, no, I'm sorry, we can't help you, but you come to me in my Bonneville office and tell me that, I'm going to pick up the phone and I'm going to phone Penny and say, this client that you were working with that you said you can't help is here, but my office is interested in helping. She, that person's not in my region, but is it okay with you if I do that? And if she's already told you no, she's going to say yes, by all means, go ahead. So don't my biggest message here today is don't give up. We really are here to try and help. It may take knocking on a couple of doors, but we really are about wanting to help you succeed. Um, all of the talk about uh, cannabis and all of the laws changing around that, that's been an interesting issue for us. Um, one of our partners that we work very closely with typically is BDC, the Business Development Bank of Canada. And uh, their decision is that they are not going to do anything, any lending that has anything to do with cannabis, period. So that puts a whole new clientele on our doorstep. Um, again, not every single CF office has changed their policy to be able to do the lending in that area. Uh, the three of us who are sitting up here today have uh, talked about it with our boards and we are willing to talk to you if that's the industry that you're looking at getting into. So that's good news for most of you that are here today. Uh, if that's something that you're interested in doing. Uh, we're also interested in working not just with the individual entrepreneur, but also with um, your communities as well. I've actually done loans in the past to the reserve themselves for uh, reserve, uh, um, uh, reserve owned business. Um, and so those kinds of things are on the table as well. We have very flexible lending models that we can work with you on. Uh, we can do seasonal lending, which is huge for some people. If their business is very seasonal, we can set up your payment schedule so that you're only making payments in the winter when you've got money coming in or only in the summer when you've got money coming in, depending upon what your business structure looks like. Um, yes, I mean, the, the one thing that I do want to stress, we don't do grants. We do lending. We do expect you to have the cash flow to support paying back that loan. We do expect there to be some kind of collateral and security put up for that loan. But it's very, very different mindset when you come in our door than what it is when you go and talk with a traditional lender. So um, we would all be very happy to talk to you about any of that at any time. And please feel free to grab one of our business cards from the back and come and have a conversation with us about your idea. Uh, the difference in our lending is we really do get to know who you are and what it is that you want to do, and we want to be there to support you. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you for following the slides so closely. <laughs> <laughs> if any of you know I Mel, don't follow the rules. <laughs> that's good. She doesn't follow the rules, and uh, I think that's applicable for Community Futures offices. We follow rules, but we find a way around, through, under, or over them to help you start your business. That's, that's another thing I say quite often. So uh, each of our offices has the lending uh, funds uh, to lend out. 
and uh, as long as we abide by our Western Economic Diversification contract, we want to work with you in creative ways through our partners, with municipalities, with anybody we can to help you to get uh, things off the ground and uh, for you to be sustainable, making money. Um, community Economic Development, uh, Phyllis has, has hinted at that already. That's um, more on the um, radar of some offices than others. Uh, our Community Futures Office is here in the northeast of Alberta. We all work together quite easily, well, often, and um, re regionally we, we all support those things and I think we're quite like-minded. So uh, we do have a couple pet projects really. Um, more so, uh, the, something that's uh, existed for quite some time is agri-foods, which we are talking about, uh, greenhouses and food is, is super important. It's a good business, it's, it's a necessity. Um, it's called uh, NAFMA, Northeastern Alberta Food Marketers Association. It's uh, gone through a couple of different uh, phases. Uh, it, it's actually the reason the Portage Food Science Center is there. It was a vision of one of the uh, people who became a general manager at uh, Community Futures in St. Paul, and then moved on to the college, at which point uh, Penny stepped in, if uh, my history is right, and then it created this uh, regionally known food label. I think it's time to relaunch that because they were ahead of their time. This was, I think, in 2010, and uh, we all recognize uh, we want to know where our food's coming from. So we support them, and we have a, a, an application in to uh, get some funding because we get our salaries paid, but to do big projects like this, we, we look for um, ways to make it happen, partnerships with the granting or industry or whoever we can do. Um, that would be to help support anything to do with food in the Northeast, pretty much. It's, it's that loose. Um, hemp is something else, uh, especially I. Uh, all of the offices I've spoken to are uh, saying, yes, you understand that, we, we, we support it. They, they recognize that hemp is probably the single best opportunity for Alberta to diversify. That's, you know, if you want to get away from oil or have another option besides oil, I think hemp is it. Um, our office, we've been involved in it for um, four years now. I sit on the Hemp Alberta Northern Advantage Steering Committee with Jan Slasky. Um, that's a, a group that is selling the product internationally. We've, they've gone to like the German auto show, uh, shipbuilders, airplane builders. We had, they had the first International Hemp Symposium in Vegreville, October 14th, 15th, 16th, and uh, they had parts of it in Winnipeg, Edmonton, Airdrie, uh, and attracted international people, and there's a lot of parts flying around in hemp right now. Um, we just have to stay ahead of the world and um, keep uh, partnerships and um, this industry supported. So that's really um, the focus that we have, but we're looking to support anything that'll further the community. The reason Western economic diversification and, and what we do is um, Behind it, the, the, the best way to say it is each business that we support that's a strong business plan, that's a strong business, helps to support the economy in general. So we do that from an individual basis and from a community and region and Alberta basis too. So if you grow and expand, um, you become customers of the bank, and then we, lend the, we take the money that uh, you've paid back to us and lend it to somebody else. That's uh, kind of in a nut, nutshell. We want you to succeed. I don't get a commission, I just have more work on my plate, but I'm a do-gooder and I want you to come in and I want to see how I, I challenge you to see how I can help you. I always try to find other opportunities you didn't think of and help you avoid problems you didn't think of. Um, we do have, I want to mention, uh, a plan for entrepreneurs with disabilities program within Community Futures itself. It's uh, handled by ourselves, so it's uh, we're, we're easy to deal with. So. Uh, if there's any barriers, um, um, we can access uh, uh, extra supports to help with the creation of a business plan with the technologies and favorable rates on uh, a loan or um, in some cases it would be more challenging for that person to get a loan. So this allows us to be able to look at it and uh, say yes to more people. So do come in and talk to us. It's a self-identified uh, type uh, situation. You don't have to bring in a doctor's note, um, and honestly, a lot of people have some, you know, anxiety. That's that, that that's an issue, and uh, come talk to us about that. Don't be shy. We all have issues. 
Some of us more than others. <laughs> okay. Um, we like to work with partners. I've got a little trade show kit thing. I didn't bring it today, but I, I like to go to Buffalo Lake Settlement, Buffalo Lake Métis Settlement uh, once a month. I'm a little overdue. I'd like to go everywhere with it. Um, that really, most of it is all the other partners' material that's on it, because we'll take advantage of what everybody else specializes in and point you there as you need to. So, I'll bring you an entrepreneur, futurepreneur, or people up to 39 years old. I think. You're all in the same boat with me, but it makes you feel good when you'd be a youth if you were 39. Uh, BBC, Alberta Culture and Tourism, uh, local lenders. Um, these are just some of our largest lenders. And then, of course, we work with local banks, too. Sometimes the local bank can't help you enough, and you need a little extra support. Our terms allow us to you know, um, see more collateral in the... Um, product in, in the collateral item than the bank does, so we, we can work together. So, so phone, a, phone your office nearest you, phone me, I'll point you where you need to be. And uh, as uh, uh, Phyllis said, some offices focus a little more on loans, some offices focus a little more on business advice, some offices focus a little bit, a little bit more on community economic development. But um, uh, if, if you, especially business planning sort of advice, Phone, phone me, and I'll, I'll help. I'll help you if I, even if you're outside my area. Um, all, all the people up here will, but you'll get a different flavor in some areas, and we'll we'll make sure you get help. Thank you.